Hello everyone. Welcome back. I my name is Dale Hawthorne. This is my channel. I'm this is part of my series on what it means to be gifted and talented and Christian. The trombone in me. Well, what does the trombone have to do with being gifted and talented and Christian? Well, it's been a part of my life and a lot of people who are gifted have academic skills, but they're um also have um, many artistic skills. Many computer programmers I know are also musicians. So this is going to be kind of a recap of my musical journey over the years, which centered around the trombone. This is not my trom one of my real trombones. This is just simply a kazoo, but uh, my real trombones are in the next room on their stands, and they usually like to give me, for me to give them a lot more attention, but uh, That'll take place at another time. So, let's start and let's go on to think about what does the trombone have to do with me and what can it have to do with you? I've had a lifetime of uh, learning the trombone all the way back to, I believe it would be night, the fall of 1967. Fall of 1967, 10 years old, fifth grade, learning the trombone. And I spent fifth and sixth grade uh, learning a trombone part-time one lesson once a week with one of the music teachers. I uh, rented trombone the first year in elementary school. Then we bought it, uh, student trombone the next year because it looked like I was going to carry on with it. And I did. That uh, trombone has stayed with me until um, I believe it would be 1993 when I donated it to a Christian school. And I uh, bought myself two more over the years. Um, there's one which I have, which is a Con 88H, uh, one of the 19, nice 1970 models, and it gets a very beautiful sound. And I bought myself in the past, uh, uh, oh, seems like it's recent, but it was actually in 2003. I bought myself a King 3B jazz trombone. I haven't played that in public that much, but I love to play it. I love to play hymns on it. So there you find some of the <laughs> gifted, talented Christian on that. So learning the trombone, that is basically uh, going through, learning the different positions, learning how to uh, use the um, mouthpiece and shape my lips and, and get the various notes and learning how to, to uh, read music. So by the time I started junior high school, I had the basic uh, trombone down. I could go from uh, a low B flat to a high F, a low B flat to a low B flat flat on the um, bottom of the bass clef and I and I as I continued on uh, with some private lessons in a junior high I extended my range down to the to the low F and uh, uh, still kept it in the high F F the F up um, that's uh, above the staff on the bass clef uh, that would be uh, the first the low F on the uh, G clef uh, the treble clef staff so Continuing on, uh, uh, increased my technique uh, over those years, and eventually I find myself with a very good uh, um, teacher who uh, taught me the correct embouchure. Correct embouchure can be a, a very good thing for any sort of uh, brass or any sort of a wind player. I was have uh, come across in uh, documentaries how Louis Armstrong had an incorrect embouchure and it cost him. He's as great a trumpet player as he is, and has been. And you can hear him on the all all the all the records that they said that uh, he suffered from an incorrect embouchure and it caused him problems throughout his career. He, as great as he was, he basically invented jazz. So um, having a correct embouchure means the thing. Being able to have the correct wind to be able to to uh, have the the rich sound, the, the trombone has a tremendous sound. It, not just the loud sound, too many people, but the very range from um, a soft intensity to a loud majestic sound to a growl. It's, it's been said that the trombone sound um, is the most, approximates the human voice, the most of any instrument. And I can, I uh, kind of say that, that that's true for me because I also um, eventually got into doing some vocal work too. I do have a bass baritone and it's kind of strange that the 
my vocal range is precisely in the middle of the range of the trombone. So it's something I can do when I'm working on a vocal part. I can play it on the trombone and rest my rest my vocal cords. And when I'm working on a trombone part, I can sing it also. So well, continuing on through trombone, you, you work through the band, you work through the uh, all the different um, parts. You learn how to play an ensemble and you get to learn who gets first tier, who gets second tier, th stuff like that. And I think there is way too much of a competition on that. Uh, the best players generally uh, were getting the first chair when I was um, in uh, junior high and high school. And um, often I found myself different times later playing second and third parts and uh, liking those just as well, that getting a good sound on those. So I think that uh, getting a, a better balance of the players on the different parts as far as their abilities, um, the more players you have and uh, have good players on all parts, that that really does improve the whole sound of the section. So um, junior high school, went to high school, uh, became a part of the marching band as well as uh, the concert band. And uh, three years in high school, three years in marching band. Um, I start out to rock with marching band was a bit rocky. Uh, we had a 4th of July parade and uh, our band wore a, a beret for the, the, that parade along with shorts and a, and a t-shirt. And I had never worn a beret before and I didn't know that I had uh, picked out a beret from the band, in, band uniforms that was too small. So uh, I did have a problem with the beret uh, coming off uh, during, the, their, during the parade. So continuing on in high school, uh, marching band with the high school games, we did uh, um, have some uh, wonderful things that we did in high school as a part of the marching band. We got to play for uh, Richard Nixon at that time in uh, 1972 was making a campaign trip through Northeastern Ohio. And our band was one of those that played on the, on the, um, on it, as he went on his uh, motor trip down the, down one of the highways. And we also got to play uh, in my senior year at the Acme Zip game uh, at the Akron University. And we, my first and only time that I can remember that I ever played on the AstroTurf Field. It was like playing on carpet, like marching and playing on carpet. So um, then I, I liked the trombone so much I uh, had had the um, Con 88H. I really, it really meant a lot to me. And uh, I had in high school a very good um, private teacher also who was a trombone specialist. She's a, a music major, trombone ma major with the um, University of Akron. and. Uh, she con continues to be, I believe, a part of the International Trombone Association. And she, she taught me well. She taught me a number of different subjects. Uh, got me on to uh, um, Rochu's uh, Melodious Etudes and taught me the, the basic warm-up. Now, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the teacher, but the guy up at Rochester. Um, granddaddy of all trombone teachers. But the Remington worked at uh, Emory Remington's warm up and helped me to uh, work to uh, extend my range. And so, so in high school, I was able to get through the audition for college with flying colors. I went to college at Miami University, Oxford, Ohio, and I uh, went through the uh, normal audition there, and uh, there were three other trombone players at that audition, and uh, my my parents were there, and they heard it, and uh, as I came out, my mom had her eyes wide open. She said, you were the best one there, so I really enjoyed that, and then as a music major, I found things to be pretty rocky, that uh, my background could have added a uh, some more things. I really wasn't prepared to be a music major and the, the kinds of things which I needed to learn, I, it was a catch up for me because I didn't have the vocal or the keyboard or the music theory experience which 
I could have had in high school, which I didn't, which I still don't know why. I still don't know why I pursued the, did not pursue those, but those didn't help me as a music major. And I also um, began to feel myself called down a different way. I went into uh, the fall of 1975, called to be a pastor and went to uh, left the music major although I did continue with it for the fall of 1975 and in December of 1975 I believe it would have been the 19th 20th or 21st I forget which date it was exactly but uh, Miami University uh, played I believe it was South Carolina in the Tangerine Bowl and our band went. I was part of the band, marching band at Miami, and uh, it was a tremendous performance. Um, Jeff Bear, who uh, I believe is, he's a, I know he is a fellow trombone player. I believe he's worked with uh, PBS station's announcer in Chicago, but he was our announcer there and he came down after the performance and said, wow, the band was just great. And that was, I would have to say, one of the very best performances as a, as a unit, uh, the whole band at that time. It just seemed like the moment we set our foot on that field, something clicked. And we just had an absolutely tremendous performance, probably the, one of the best performances of any, uh, uh, any group I was ever with. So after I left the music major, um, I did, did not give up the trombone. I did some uh, solo work in church. I um, played in uh, the Miami, Miami had a, a practice, practice band there. So I continued to play with that for a little while. And I continued to play afterwards. Um, for many years, I didn't really improve that much. It wasn't until I actually became a pastor and found myself in a small church, found myself in between churches, that I found myself with some time on my hands. So I picked up the trombone again, and I discovered at the local library there was a book which I had known about since I was a child. It was called, it was on, a, I'm not remembering things here, right? But it was, was on extending the trombone. Um, I'll put the the name of the book and the link in the in the notes so that if anyone wants to know what it was, but it guided me to extend my range. My range right now is uh, about four and a half to five octaves on the trombone um, with both the 88H, uh, which is a large bore tenor trombone and the uh, 3B, which is a medium bore uh, tenor trombone. So I was able to extend my range uh, having a lot of fun and I went in the about 2000 to play with the church orchestra in a large church here in suburban Cleveland and uh, uh, stayed with there for a little while um, the first performances that we had were absolutely great they were very I want to say really spiritual because the performances also because we, we were there to praise the Lord with our instruments and serve the Lord with our instruments as long with the car as part of a Christmas program, part of an Easter program. And uh, it did seem that uh, for a little while there, um, I continued on with uh, singing with the worship team. Uh, by then I had developed my voice enough that I was able to uh, use my bass baritone uh, voice with the worship team. And, but I could, I left the orchestra. Um, it seemed like uh, the competition just became too cutthroat and it became very unspiritual in some ways. I think there were, there were some people that were involved there that be, who uh, um, were not following the Lord and I do know some uh, things that were happening in their lives which were simply not right, which should not have happened in a church orchestra. So that's, I'm continuing to play when I can right now for, for my own enjoyment. I haven't played any groups for a little while. I did audition with a dance band here for a, a few years ago. And uh, the, the lead trombone player there played with Frank Sinatra in uh, Las Vegas. And he liked my playing. And I thought I 
like knowing that that uh, part of the things of life is getting having the right people like you and sometimes having the wrong people um not like you um means that you're doing something good or in some ways so 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 the lessons that i have for the trombone uh, these are things which are fine for others but um as a musician um this will apply to anyone who has any sort of um plays any sort of instrument get the best instrument you can afford um, you're starting out with student instruments is fine until you know how serious you want to be but there's a real difference in the student interest instruments and the professional level instruments and sometimes in high school you might want to get the professional level um, like the con 888 h's the king 3b's or something like that to go on if you're intent on going on throughout your life um, the professional instruments usually have a better rate of, gra of brass usually have a um, superior workmanship and uh, they're usually the classic ones that you hear on the recordings in the and in the orchestras and they usually get the best sound and although there are some people that actually do fairly well with the student level instruments but um, get the best instrument that you can afford and get the best teacher that you can afford the teacher can make a tremendous amount of difference um, I would say that it would be a good idea um, if whenever you're in high school get the best teacher that's a specialist in the instrument for at least a year or two before you leave high school someone who can teach you the new answers in the instrument um, the different um, series of notes on the positions of the trombones um, you learn that this note we start is in first position this other note is in first position other note is in second position so you'll find out that second position isn't this is kind of an approximation for most of the notes in the series that you'll find there so you find out which ones are a little bit sharp which ones are a little bit um a little bit flat and how to adjust those with just a very slight um, flip, flick of the wrist how to how to properly um, lubricate your instrument take care of it and uh, other different nuances which uh, may not you may not find with a teacher that teaches a lot of different instruments um, and learn the instrument thoroughly um, there's many many depths to learning an instrument and and uh, such as some of the things I mentioned about knowing the different uh, series of tones and the, the positions which ones are a little bit flat which position which notes are a little bit um, sharp and uh, the, the different uh, ways to go through to do things like a glissando in the trombone uh, um, normally when you first learn it you learn that you're supposed to go whoa which um, is true but uh, if you're hitting a great uh, range of tones you don't want to go just straight from the high note to the low note but you may want to go you would want to go through the, all the other notes in the series that's something that you uh, pick I picked up from um, the guy who was the trombone player for Maynard Ferguson's orchestra for many years and uh, always warm up always warm up get that good good sound early don't just go in there cold if you can all help it at all and uh, on that way you'll have your best sound to, um, whenever you're performing with a group or there whenever you're performing for a lesson and practice and perform with good posture I'm not showing good posture on my chair here but um, stand sit with good posture with your um, back as straight as you can and you get your best air you'll hold the instrument the best you'll have less in, uh, repetitive stress injuries on that you'll you have less um, pain with uh, if you keep your horn in the same um, same the same position you'll, you'll just uh, be able to play your best and be able to last your best and develop your voice in addition to your instrument again this was my big mistake 
it's kind of like my family. Um, I, my mother played uh, piano and organ. And uh, the other, my father and my two brothers, uh, uh, my two brothers each started an instrument but never really went very far with it. And uh, none of us could really sing. So I grew up, at, and it really wasn't until the time in which after I had come to know the Lord and after I was really knew what it was to be filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, I was baptized in water by, by immersion back in January, 9, uh, January 1976, uh, January 23rd, and I came to know a great joy, a great power to witness, uh, much more, even though I had met, followed the Lord and been had had saving faith for oh, about a year and a half at that point. But uh, something that that set free was also my singing voice, which is something kind of unusual. But uh, And I just began to be better as we were just singing in our uh, Christian group in, in college and singing along there. I just began to be better. And um, then... As a pastor, I started to work with a church which uh, the, the pianist are for Sunday mornings, he was an accomplished musician, a music major, a madrigal singer. And he had me come there and go over those hymns with him. And he gave me a lot of very good free voice lessons at the time, which was something which would have been great for me to have. And I continued on myself with learning my voice. I was able to uh, uh, become part of a uh, church choir, a large church, and a worship team, too. I uh, singing bass baritone, and uh, yeah, the, all this, this big chest, these big lungs, this big nose, was able to get a surprisingly good sound for uh, uh, praising the Lord and helping to lead in worship. And leading in worship was uh, something that as a pastor, I felt that my ministry, even if I wasn't the preaching pastor, that that's a place that God had for me there. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And that really was a part of the ministry, which I really enjoyed. So um, if you have a voice, it's said that your real instrument is your voice. And, your instru and the instrument that you play, the wind instrument, is in addition to your voice. And... Uh, and this is something which I think, especially for a, a guy, if you have your voice in that range, uh, very few women have a tenor, uh, voice in a, a tenor or baritone range, as far as I know. I do, do have a friend who, uh, a female friend who, uh, she does have a tenor voice, and I've joked with her a little bit about time, so that's kind of funny. But uh, develop your voice in addition to your instrument. And, Hear the music in your head first as much as you can. Uh, more, the music isn't just notes. It's an expression, the notes. The notes are a guide to what the music should be. I find it hard right now to say, say much more than that. But, uh, and if you want to go on, learn the keyboard in music theory. This was my, my mistake in addition to my, and to, uh, not developing my voice. Learn the keyboard. Uh, play, learn to play the piano. Some basic stuff. You may not need to be a concert pianist, but it's nice to be able to play and um, at least be able to plunk out a melody, be able to know some chords, be able to know some music theory. Train your ear to learn um, what sharp, flat, and uh, if you can get to where you can recognize a tone now that like i say this is middle c start from middle c and go onward and for the trombone especially the next one learn alto tenor and treble clef um there are times that you can uh as you go go advanced beyond high school you will need to know alto and tenor clef and learning treble clef can help you to uh, uh double some parts it can help you also to be able to pick up some melodies um, for for the trombone, and uh, if you're learning music theory, you already learned that. But uh, being able to read the treble clef and apply that to your tr trombone as you're playing it is something which 
uh, that coordination there with the knowledge of the travel clef, what it is there, and to immediately translate to to where that is in the instrument, like you normally do a bass clef, like you should be able to do a tenor and alto clef. Um, that's where you really learn it. And practice your exercises intelligently and musically. Um, this is something which I also wish I had known sooner. There's a book called uh, uh, The Art of Pr Practicing by uh, Madeline Bruiser, and I'll put that in the notes also. And when I first read that book, I actually cried most of the way through it because I realized that all these years, all these years of practice, that just learning how to practice musically and intelligently, knowing what that meant, would have meant so much more for all the uh, everything I've done over the years. And practice both with and without a metronome. Metronome is great to teach you how to count, to teach you how to keep in rhythm, keep be consistent there. Um, it can be a crutch. And uh, it's possible also, as humans, I'm told that we do have a natural metronome within us. And uh, so learning how to play without a metronome metronome can help you to develop that to recognize that but eventually you can figure it out and that can help you very much if you're with parts which uh subdivide the beat in very small ways such as you may have a uh a 16th note rest and a dotted um dotted eighth note and to be able to precisely count that on the beat you know, having the inner metronome, having being able to think of that correctly. Um, the next one is some, some some of the people to avoid. Avoid the negative and the domineering private teachers, conductors, and band directors. Um, there are a number of good people. I've worked with a number of good people over the years. There are um, private teachers, conductors, and band directors, which uh, um, if, they, uh, if they're not respectful of you, if they're negative, if they put you down, um, do what you can to find another. Even if the band director at your high school where you have to be with to be able to play in the band is someone who uh, is negative nomineering and uh, doesn't have much respect for you, is flies, gets angry easily. Um, you may be able to work with other groups, with other directors. Um, that was one of the things which I enjoyed the most. Uh, um, the best band director I worked with was a uh, the late Richard uh, Jacobois, who was with the University of Akron, and um, I never, I can never remember a time that he was disrespectful for anyone, and he uh, drew a great performance, the best performance out of the instrument of the people there, and and uh, the bands that I played with at the during the summer, it was summer band there, um, they had a some very good players they had some uh, uh players that weren't so great but uh he was able to draw a great uh performance from them and knowing the trombone and whatever your instrument may be listen to the great players of all instruments not just the trombone and listen to the great groups the great bands the great singers um it's well known for the trombone that uh Frank Sinatra was introduced, was influenced by Tommy Dorsey, the trombone player, the great uh, uh, big band leader. And Frank Sinatra influenced a lot of trombone players. So um, learn from other instruments. Uh, I've loved Louis Armstrong, uh, um, a lot of what I've heard of him, and uh, Miles Davis. Um, I don't agree with much he did in his life, but uh, I, his music has meant a lot to me. And so listen to the great ones, let them influence you. The more, th the better you hear, the more you hear good stuff, the great stuff, the more it will guide you as to uh, how to bring it forth. You'll want to and have the enthusiasm for playing well, for doing, doing things well. Last thing, uh, guard your practice time. You get to have time to practice and uh, make certain that uh, it's a case where uh, you'll have uh, you 
less interruptions where you'll be able to be in a room where you can hear hear the acoustics the in instrument well, uh, well enough to, to um, you may uh, like avoiding uh, too much echo or too much absorption uh, of the sound but uh, look for a good place to uh, practice where you can hear your instrument accurately and uh, where you won't have great interruptions and if you're at home with a family uh, spouses children brothers sisters pets will all try to interrupt um, we did uh, did have a dachshund a great dachshund great dog and uh, but she liked to sing along with me so that was always a problem when i was in high school trying to play the play the instrument so so last thing band and orchestra directors i've worked with uh been with a number of them over the years and there are just some things i think that you'll you'll hear from me from someone who played the instrument over the years keep the tempo clearly um generally those who do it who uh actually been through a music education program actually have been taught uh, generally do do a very good job of keeping the tempo clearly um, sometimes it's the amateurs that uh, don't do that so um, someone who uh, hasn't really been taught uh, again keep the tempo clearly that's your first responsibility to, because if you keep that tempo clearly you keep us all together and develop a positive direction share your vision this isn't a case where um, it's just about playing the notes play the it's playing the music and uh, if you get angry every time there's a bad note that does set a very bad spin on the way that the group is growing and uh, people will not play their best they will try to be invisible they'll play some they won't play their correct volume I remember uh, like it was like that in junior high that uh, we didn't play out as we could for fear that a wrong note would be recognized and we'd be called to the carpet and we'd be humiliated so but share the vision for the music share why you why these pieces are being picked what their significance is um, in music history uh, who's played them best if you want to hear a better recording of it go here um, share your musical knowledge generally too now, if you're up there in that position you really should have a lot of musical knowledge and and they're kids they and uh or they're amateurs most of the time most of the time you won't be dealing with someone who's a professional who knows as much about music as you do but uh share it and let them know let them know that music is something worth being enthusiastic worth our enthusiasm and especially if we're here to uh um, serve the lord and worship in some way that it is something that uh, it's an offering of praise to him it's an offering of leading a group of christians in praise to him so share your knowledge and you know again uh also respect the musical knowledge and abilities and music musicians that you work with um as as you go through so, some of the kid um, high school students are very good and uh you you may in fact learn from them and especially as you're working with adults um respect their musical knowledge and their abilities because uh um, they are adults and they do need to be treated like that if you're working with them if you're working with adults so develop a respectful encouraging coaching style um there was a young man who worked with our band uh, during band camp and uh this is he went on to become a band director and this was his style respectful encouraging coach and uh as far as i can remember throughout band camp he he was the only one that ever had positive word for me anytime I did something right so and we are musicians we are sensitive uh, we do want to do best uh, sometimes we struggle 
We need someone who can help us find the right way through the struggle. And encourage and reward collaboration and teamwork. Um, some musicians are the most competitive and cut cutthroat people, honestly, that I've ever worked with. But there have been others who have been great to collaborate with, with teamwork. Um, a, a musician who's got strengths in areas which, which you don't or maybe stronger than you can be an ins inspiration, but that isn't a reason to try to cut a person down, to try, try to beat a person down, try to uh, hu humiliate them, bully them because uh, they outperform you in some way. And if you're a band director or orchestral director, um, everyone's, no one's perfect. And you're going to make some mistakes too. Take responsibility for them. If you, um, if you, you make a mistake in t telling off, being too angry with making a correction, apologize. That's a human being there, whether they're a child or with, uh, a teenager or adult. That's a human being there. If you go overboard, please, please apologize. And please let others make human errors. It's, it can be a struggle. Um, some people are better at sight reading than others. Um, I wish that I had been, when I was in junior high and high school, better at sight reading. But uh, once I usually, once I took it home and practiced, I'd get better and I'd usually be um, uh, playing it pretty good by the time the concerts actually came around. But uh, there'll be times people will not, once you set the music in front of them, they're not going to read it and play it perfectly. Um, give them a chance to look over the music to be able to understand it and um, we'll all be making errors along the way. But how we treat the person who um, makes the error, can make all the difference. It's, there's no real error that's worth destro destroying a uh, promising young musician. If you're an, a band director in high school or an, uh, alienating an adult player, if you're working with an adult player. And this last one, encourage your players to express themselves musically, to go beyond playing just the notes. Uh, Doug Wright, who's one of the best trombone players in the world, who I heard uh, give a master class some years ago, mentioned how trying to put a story behind the, the, the piece that you're playing, if you're playing a solo piece, and trying, and maybe you could work out a story for whatever play, piece you're playing in a, a concert set. Um, how you're expressing the emotions, the story that you're bringing across, express themselves musically. You know, and I know with uh, players of varying strengths, sometimes it is that struggle just to get the correct notes out. But this is music. It does, is a way of expressing what's on our hearts. So encourage your players to express themselves musically. And last, um, if you like this, please hit like and subscribe to this channel. I really like having had the chance to share this with you. I hope this was a help to you. I hope it was a ministry to you, although it really didn't have that much specifically Christian content or even about gifted and talented content. I really would encourage you to uh, continue on with some of the other content as well and see if that See if that uh, encourages you and helps you minister to you. God bless you, and I'm, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time, and I hope that uh, you do have a chance to put all your abilities before the Lord, consecrate them to him for his glory in whatever you do. Thank you.